It's me, Dr. Amy, and it is time for another Tuesday tip. This month in Genetic Rockstars, which is our MTHFR community, we are talking specifically about headaches and migraines. Also specifically about how they relate to vascular disorders in the brain, right? So MTHFR is a risk for migraines with aura, which is the kind of the classical like migraine, whatever, which is also migraines with aura are a risk for stroke, which actually at the end of the day, I think what's really happening there is MTHFR is a risk for both migraines and stroke, right? So it, there's something at the root here and I think it's MTHFR. Um, and so what we're talking about is kind of working on prevention strategies for all of the above because nobody wants strokes and nobody wants migraines. So let's work on that. Now, some of the factors that we've talked about in terms of MTHFR and vascular risk is something called microclotting. This is a huge issue in early pregnancy and pregnancy loss. And I've talked about it in that context before on the podcast. Um, that's the To Health With That podcast. If you haven't listened, check it out. Um, but with this microclotting, basically it's clots that are too small to be considered a stroke, but large enough to do some damage when we're talking about small vessel areas. And so that's eyeballs, that's developing fetuses, that's potentially kidneys, um, and eventually it's brain, right? And so what this microclotting can lead to is things like transient ischemic attacks, which is sort of like a baby stroke, right? It's, it's not a full stroke where there's an actual like clot blocking an artery, but it's like a baby stroke where there's these little tiny clots that interfere with blood flow to particular areas of the brain. And when we have these little baby areas of blood flow disruption, that could potentially be a trigger for a migraine, but it's certainly a red flag that stroke risk is increased, right? We do not want microclots. We don't want them. And so some of the ways we can help to prevent microclotting are through things that help to thin and liquefy the blood. Also things that help to open, widen blood vessels so that blood flow gets better. My favorite thing, as you all know, to open and widen blood vessels is magnesium. I am obsessed with magnesium. I talk about it quite a lot. It's my favorite thing and it's literally the only supplement I remember to pack on this trip to England, which is where I am now, which is why I'm not in my office. So magnesium, big deal for me, right? Um, but magnesium basically opens blood vessels so that blood can flow through effectively. And in situations of magnesium deficiency, we do start to see some vessel narrowing and even sudden vessel cramping, I would call it, like a cramp, right? Which can lead to both TIA and also angina, chest pain, issues with cardiac blood flow. We don't want that. We don't want that. Mm -mm. Um, so magnesium is one of my recommended sort of blood flow increasing supplements. Um, it's very dose dependent and finding the right dose for you can be a little bit tricky. Um, after magnesium, things to thin and sort of smooth out the blood so that we're not seeing microclotting. Fish oil is one of the best and most well documented. Um, it's very low risk and it's also anti-inflammatory, but it really keeps the blood slippery and smooth and prevents this little microclotting situation, which is what we want, right? And we may actually see for some people migraine prevention as well, because if there's not microclots, there might not be as many triggers for migraines. The other thing that's very helpful in microclotting is 81 milligram baby aspirins, right? So baby aspirin at a low dose is a very, very safe, very well-tested intervention for people who do have clotting issues. Um, it's not as effective as a prescription clotting agent, something like a heparin or a whatever, uh, but it is very safe. It's something you can do for yourself and you know, it doesn't have to be an everyday deal. It can be a couple of times a week deal just to make sure that some of that clotting isn't happening. Also on the podcast, we talked a lot about 81 milligram aspirin 
for uh, microclotting in early pregnancy and some of the research around that. So if you happen to be in a fertility situation where you've experienced repeat pregnancy loss, go back and listen to those podcast episodes in season three, because that's really, really important. Okay, now also aspirin is a very, very effective intervention when you have a migraine, um, and it's been shown to have very good results. So there may be some overlap here between prevention and treatment. Tuesday tip.